were in uh, Washington just uh, last week, uh, several of us, about six of us, and uh, talking to members of the Congress. We can't talk to anyone in administration. They are too busy writing regulations and releasing them. If you hook up yourself to CMS or AHRQ websites, you will get about six emails a day on average. And if you want to go a little bit further, NIH and then DEA, uh, your state organizations, your computer will be getting like 30 to 40 emails a day. So our regulations are really going fast and uh, furiously. So basically, this is what uh, somebody was talking about, our health care reform. Let me get this straight. We passed a health care plan written by a committee whose chairman says he doesn't understand it, passed by a Congress that hasn't read it, but exempts themselves from it. We kept asking them, why do you, they exempt from this? They, they don't know. Democrats don't talk. Republicans don't know. To be signed by a president that also hasn't read it, and who smokes? with funding administered by a treasury chief who didn't pay his taxes, <laughs> all to be overseen by a surgeon journal who is obese and financed by a country that is broke. That is our healthcare system. <laughs> so what the hell could possibly go wrong? I don't know. I was the most optimistic person all this time, but uh, it is changing. <laughs> So this is my disclaimer. Like many other people, I don't get any funding. I really don't get any funding, OK? A lot of people do get it. They just don't tell you, <laughs> whereas I don't get it. Somebody told me, one of my friends, that I had a reverse conflict of interest, Siram Atluri, because actually I'm putting money into this rather than getting money from it. I submitted an article to JAMA. You think Lancet and JAMA are such high-impact, great, wonderful journals. I do a lot of reviews for both of them, actually. So they said an organization in Florida received funding from this company who funded the study, of course. This is all disclosed and everything. I didn't get any money. Because of that, there was conflict of interest. <laughs> Some are, because it was associated with ASIP, that was a branch of Florida, ASIP, so which I didn't even know. <laughs> and another person said, another reviewer, they can't even figure out who has the bias. If the reviewers have tremendous amounts of bias, you can't do anything. <coughs> this another one works for a drug company. So he doesn't want this published either. So that is how the conflicts of interests are running nowadays. I want to thank all the sponsors, the speakers, and the course directors. This is a two and a half day course. You have one day review course here and one and a half day hands-on cadaver workshop. Please complete your evaluations. These are different for didactics and workshops. This is to improve future courses to get credits, and if you have complaints, let us know, but don't expect a refund. <laughs> Please do not come late or finish late. This is mostly for the instructors. The way you look is fine. You don't have to shave again before you give a lecture. You don't have to dress up. If you want to dress up, that's fine. Do it in the morning, but just be there, and don't keep changing your slides every five seconds. This is for everyone else. Don't ask questions until the end unless the speaker says it is interactive and you can talk. Do not talk in the meeting. Keep you, please do not keep your cell phone on. Vibration is OK. If you don't know how to put it on vibration, please turn it off. That is the most common complaint we get at these meetings is that tell the not to keep phone on. <laughs> Those are the things they write on there, so.
please do not argue. Do not forget that we all have differences and differences of opinion, practices, and everything else. Do not insult the speakers. You can insult me, but no one else. Do not be disrespectful. Do not invade privacy. It really doesn't matter if you make $6 million or $60,000. It doesn't matter to me. So just keep it to yourself, each one. Don't be a bad neighbor, especially if you have bad breath. So turn off your cell phone again. So if you have questions, you can talk to any one of us. There is general session, introduction, imaging for interventionalists, then algorithmic approach to interventional pain management. We also have breakout sessions separated into three. Now, some of you have attended these meetings before, and lectures may look same, but you really can't keep changing the subject uh, or material because we are not the government. They can change it. So. If you really get bored, you can walk out and have a cup of coffee or whatever you want to do. <laughs> we try to standardize the lectures. I think these are working out much better now. We are not getting so many headaches from the speakers or attendees. This is how we cover these topics, except the IPM preparation, where the, those are the case presentations. So that doesn't cover, but you spend all this items, cover all of the items, history, clinical presentation, anatomy, technical aspects, complications, evidence, patient selections, and we try to give five minutes for questions and answers at the end. Now, important parts for our purposes, practice purposes, and also for here, the cadaver, if you are taking AB part two, is anatomy, technical aspects, and complications. So everybody is trying to focus more on this. This is where we have more dangerous issues. Just now my good friend was telling me that there is a neurosurgeon doing epidurals with a spinal needle. <laughs> In a surgery center. So office, fine, nobody checks you until you get into trouble. You kill someone. Either you pay a few million dollars, you lose your license, or go to jail. But in surgery centers, it shouldn't happen. It should not happen in a hospital either. So that is not standard of care. So those are the issues we want to learn. So the, we don't have each person introducing and everything else. We don't waste any time. These are the introductions everybody is going to get right now. Dr. Benyamin, he's the past president, and he's going to, looks like he's speaking quite a bit, so four lectures. And this is the examination preparation uh, where we have different issues, like this is the case presentation, lumbar axial pain. They will be looking at the type of questions they will be asking in the examination and discussion. They also are going to talk about evaluation of chronic pain patient. Frank Falco, he's talking about thoracic facet joint interventions, percutaneous adhesiolysis. Hansen, he has four lectures, lumbar transforaminal epidurals, adjuvant drug therapy, and two case presentations. Stan Helm has three lectures. Dr. Patel has three lectures. I have just one more here, but I have a lot of other outside lectures. <laughs> we are starting to write the guidelines for uh, next batch. I guess we revise the guidelines every two to three years, so we, we will be working on those, and we will also be working on other issues. Dr. Seagal is speaking on three topics. Dr. Shah, three topics. Okay, now we will discuss a little bit about issues and solutions. So we divided these are before Obamacare and after Obamacare, VHR or AHR. <laughs> well, everything looks bad, but it can be done. This is what my grandson was showing the other day to me. <laughs> 
but my daughter won't let me use his pictures. So <laughs> I had to get one from the storage. So you can use, we can do these things. And uh, he, my grandson is only two years old. I was so scared when I took him to this playhouse. And he manipulates himself so well. I was worried, but he was not worried about it at all. <laughs> he was going on these monkey bars <laughs> up and down. <laughs> Whew, that was scary for me. We all know that uh, costs of health care are going up. The question is, where is the money going and who is paying for it? A lot of people have misconceptions. Uh, private insurers, we think they are our friends and they pay more and they do better. I've been saying this for the last 12, 13 years. That is not true. It is much harder to work with one private insurer in one state than working with Medicare nationally. And Medicare is the biggest, largest insurer you have. Of course, in each state there is Medicaid. Now, private insurers are becoming very difficult nowadays to work with. They're all pushing us to go for a single payer system. Then they will also more benefit more. And they worked out a deal with Obama. He empowered them. So there is going to be a Medicare, and there is another system called Medicare-like. So that would be Obamacare, that will be Medicare minus. Every insurance nowadays, most of them, if not everyone, is offering you either Medicare rates or 10% less than Medicare. Your imagination about 400% of Medicare is dead. <laughs> If they give you 40%, 50% over Medicare, you're really doing good. They don't even want to give you the same rates as they will give you in the hospital if you are doing in your office or if you are doing in your surgery center. So these are all. Now, healthcare, when healthcare started, it was mostly the private. Public funding was much lower. Now, this is also before Obamacare. If we keep going, the private spending is going down and public spending is going up. Even under, before the Obamacare, this is how it is. Now, under the Obamacare, private care will be like this and this will be like this. 